The purpose of this video tutorial is to show how to set up design groups for column design in Adapt Builder 2016. And in this video we're going to show three different ways that the design groups are generated in the program. The first thing we're going to do is launch Builder and we're going to launch this using Edge and Floor Pro just to allow us to design or excuse me to set up a multi-story model. So we'll go ahead and select OK and in the program we're going to generate a model using a conversion of a DWG file. So we'll go ahead under File, Import, DWG DXF. We'll go ahead and select a file and in the file we're going to call this um, the podium level. We'll go ahead first and calibrate the uh, and scale the the DWG into this interface and we'll just uh, use the option for defaults for move imported objects we'll leave that off and then for insertion at a particular location vertically we'll leave that as at the current plane I'll say OK using my snap tools I'll go ahead and just uh, scale the drawing so we'll call this 20 feet between these two points that I've selected and now I have um, a, a scaled drawing file. So I'm going to convert this file now to structural components. So I'll select the objects. This is, uh, for example, the edge of slab. We're going to use the build menu, transform into a slab. And I'll do the same for columns. So we'll go ahead and select these polygons which represent the columns. And this is the most important piece uh, that we're focusing on. When I convert columns from the CAD file uh, or the polygons to columns, the program will automatically assign a design group. So you can see that once I go to build transform drawing entities and I go ahead and transform these into columns, if I select the column, open the property menu for the column, you can see that the section type for this column is a 30 by 30 and under the option for build section type manager we have one section type represented as a 30 by 30 so every unique polygon that's converted into a column um, based on size will be generated as a column section type and I can go ahead and define the parameters related to this section type for the purpose of designing the columns we'll go ahead and just cancel out of that for now and I'm going to select these wall groups, go back to build, transform into several walls. So this transform those transforms that group into multiple walls. And then I'll transform these two openings. So we'll go back to build and tram, transform those entities and openings. So I now have a structural model. I have basically one level. And I'll just replicate that vertically. Um, three or four times to create a multi-story model. So let's turn off using the group library, I'll turn off the CAD file that I imported and I'm essentially left with a um, slab, columns, and walls, and openings. And we'll go ahead and replicate this by copying the reference planes and I'll copy it four times. Using my story manager toolbar if I navigate over to full structure mode and then I check the rendered view of this, you can see this now is a multi-story structure. So um, for purposes now of designing the columns, you can see that I've replicated the columns at the lower level vertically. So if I go ahead and double click on any column vertically, that's also assigned a section type. Now we're going to go back to single level and let's assume we wanted to model a column from scratch. So we say, well, these two columns, we're not going to really use those columns in the model. Those are too large. I'll go ahead and delete those. And before I even analyze the structure, I want to reassign a couple of columns. And I'll go back to my lower level. I'm currently at the current plane. That's my lowest level in single level mode. And I'm going to go ahead and just define a column. The section type for a new column definition is set to none. So for this column, I'll call this a 12 by... 28 and I'll just drop in a couple of these columns 
and then I'm going to take those columns and I'll replicate those vertically four times. And now again if I go to my multi-story view and I check my three-dimensional view we have those columns shown here. This is the column stack that I just created. But that column stack is not currently assigned a section type. So if I wanted to design these columns, I have to have a section type assigned. And this would be similar uh, in process to just creating a model from scratch. I would have to define each section type for a column. So there's multiple ways of doing this. The first way would be I could go in and just generate a new column type from scratch. And I'll go to Build, Section Type Manager. I'll just add a new column type. This is going to be, let's say, 12 by uh, 20, I'll call it M for manual, and for that column we're going to call it a type for column. Um, it's a rectangular shape, the material, and then all of the properties associated with it. So this would be 12 by uh, 12 by 28. And then we could assign reinforcement if we wanted to code check the column, or at least uh, determine the sizes of vertical bars. Uh, ties and so on. So we're not going to go to that extent here, but this defines the properties associated with this particular section type. We'll say OK. Now I've assigned that for one column, uh, or I've assigned that for several columns that I now need to assign to that group. So now I'll go here and select 12 by 28. So I can do that manually for each column, or I can select it by groups. So if I go ahead and turn off my slabs, I'll just select this one group right there, or I could have gone to a plan view. This is a bit easier to select it like so in, in global mode. Whenever we've selected more than one item at the same time that we want to modify, we're going to use modify, modify item properties, and under the column tab, we're going to select design group and we can now assign those columns that are selected to the to the design group that I manually created. We'll say OK. So that assigns those. If I rotate this uh, view here, I'm still left with this stack right here which is now unassigned. We haven't assigned those yet. So we're going to show you an, another way that we can assign those. If I go ahead and just select the stack, I can go back to my modify, modify item properties, and I'm going to assign this column stack under design group from one of these options. I can either auto assign it to an existing group, I can auto assign a new group, or I can auto assign each of the columns selected as individual design groups. And here I'm going to assign it to a new group. So that's going to create a new group for that one particular selection of columns. Back in our section type manager you're now going to see three groups. This is the group that was created from the CAD file, this is the group that I manually generated, and this is now the group that the program generates based on my selections that I just made. And I now have three design groups for processing a column design. In the next uh, step what we're going to do is we're going to show now a different way of doing this using uh, the an import from a Revit file. So this, th what we've just shown is how to how to do this using import from a CAD file or just manually creating the groups inside of the program. I'm now going to import a model that was generated using um, our Revit link. So we'll go back now to uh, create this model. I'm going to import what's called an IMP file from the Revit link and we're going to select the option to import this entire model without loads or load combos. We don't really need those for this case. We'll say OK. And now we have a model that has been imported. The model has several different unique column sizes in it, but again if I just take this model and analyze it without having assigned groups, there would be no way for me to design the columns because I have to assign each of these columns to a group. So if, if I double click on a column, for example, the section type here is set to none. If I go back over here and select this one, 
this is also set to none so none of the columns are currently grouped I could go again to build and generate my own groups which takes more time um, or I can use auto assignment again so in this case let's just deselect the slabs walls openings and beams so we're left with only the columns and we can see if I go to a plan view and I'll just go to one level for example let's go down to one of the lower or the upper levels we can see if I turn on the labels for the uh, columns excuse me the the column sizes the dimensions of the columns let's go over here to column dimensions turn those on you can see there's various sizes there's 22 square 24 square 40 by 22 um, and if I scroll down there are a few other sizes down below so there should be several groups that are created when we create these automatically and what we'll do is we're going to select all of the columns I'll go to uh, the option for modify modify item properties under column under the select uh, checkbox uh, design group we're going to either auto assign to existing groups we don't have any existing groups so we can't really do that we could auto assign each unique column size will be grouped together or we can assign every column individually I'm gonna show you uh, the option for individual assignments so this means every unique column between levels will be assigned as its own independent uh, column. In other words, the program won't envelope designs for a particular group of columns. If I go now to build section type manager, you can see we have as many columns as there are in the model. That's how many design groups are now defined, which is really um, not the most efficient way in the program to design columns because typically we're going to design a group of columns vertically connected to one particular column size and then those may transition to another to another size so what I'll do now is go ahead and just select these again and I'll now go back to modify item properties and under the column tab design group I'm going to set this to none that's just going to disassociate the column uh, with a design group I still have design groups that are selected and created here but we can you know go through and delete all of these groups if we wanted to we don't need to delete these the program will just simply add on to the uh, groups that we currently have in this list so I'll just delete them to refresh say OK I'm gonna do the same thing but now I'm going to assign them as groups instead of individually and I'll go back to modify item properties we'll go to column and we're gonna select the option for a new group and now if I for example double click here this is the 21 basically the 22 by 22 group this was the 40 by 22 group and so on and the um, section type manager now groups three unique column sizes that are available in the program now we may want to split those into more groups for example this entire group of 40 by 22s is being designed as one design type but we may say well we want to design the, the three upper levels as its own design so what I can do is go ahead and select these three let's go back to a 3d view here I'm gonna turn off the labels and the dimensions for just a sec so we'll go ahead and um, turn off dimension say OK we're gonna select one two and three and I'm gonna group that down further to a new group so I'll select those three I'll go back to modify item properties I'll use the icon this time and under column we're gonna say assign a new group and now if I go back to my section type manager the library you can see I have this new group here and we can we can modify the name if we want this might be called you know um, upper and I might call this group here something like lower so once we have defined all of our groups we analyze the model globally we can then utilize the column design tool in the program to design 
these columns that have now been grouped. If you have any questions, please contact support at adaptsoft.com.